I bet you've never heard of any of these books. So today on Book Break, we are talking about hidden gems. Those books that maybe weren't as widely buzzed about as some others, but you find them hidden away on your bookshelf and they're absolutely brilliant. So a really great example that you will probably have heard of is Stoner by John Williams. So a few years ago, this suddenly blew up, 50 years after it was first published, and was described in The New Yorker as the greatest American novel you've never read. And of course now it is so widely beloved, it was so worth rediscovering. So we thought we would dig around and see what other hidden gems we could find. So I've been asking the team, I've been raiding my own bookshelves, and we've come up with a list of nine books that you probably have never heard of, but you really should read. And while we're talking about hidden gems, can we just take a second to appreciate this gorgeous backdrop? I'm here at the tea bar in Tichulia in Covent Garden, which is this gorgeous tea bar. I will link everything in the description box below so you can go and check it out. Definitely a hidden gem in London. So on with the books. As we were just talking about Stoner, a similar book is A Whole Life by Robert C. Thaler. So again, this is about a man's whole life and lots of very sad things happen to him and he never quite achieves any of the things that we as a society place value on for meaning success and yet that doesn't mean that he doesn't live this wonderful whole life. So the book, rather than having this great sweeping narrative, is made up of a series of small moments that add up to a life and it's about the main character's relationship with his community and his relationship with nature. It's a very, very moving book and definitely a hidden gem. So this next book was recommended by Alex, our email marketing manager, and this is Tender by Belinda McKeon. So this is set in 1990s Dublin and it's a story of desire and obsession. It's about two university students, Catherine and James, who strike up a very intense friendship, but Catherine starts to want more from James than he can give her. So James is gay in an island that's still very unfriendly to gay men and Catherine, whose perspective the novel is from and who filters all the events through her perspective, longs for him so intensely that she doesn't want him to be close to anybody else. So it starts to get quite dark and obsessive in that way. And John Boyne described it as one of the best Irish novels he's ever read and compared Belinda McKeon to Anne Tyler in terms of how amazing her characters are. So that is some very high praise. And now another one from my bookshelf. This is The Homemaker by Dorothy Canfield Fisher. So you can tell from the very distinctive grey cover, this is a Persephone Books book. And Persephone Books are all about hidden gems. They're basically devoted to rediscovering neglected 20th century female writers. And The Homemaker felt to me so ahead of its time. So it's about this married couple, Mr. and Mrs. Knapp, who are stuck in the gender roles of their time. So Mr. Knapp goes out to a job that he hates, and Mrs. Knapp stays at home and runs the house with almost military precision. Until one day, an accident means that Mr. Knapp is no longer able to leave the house and go to work, and so they're forced to switch. Mrs. Knapp goes out and works in a shop, and Mr. Knapp stays home and looks after the children and does the housework. And suddenly, these characters come back to life because they're doing what they all along wanted to do. Mrs. Knapp can now channel all of her business management skills into a work environment, and the very gentle Mr. Knapp loves spending time with his children and listening to what they have to say. And it's still really relevant today, even though we're no longer in a society where women are expected to stay at home and do the housework, it still felt so relevant in terms of questioning the gender roles that are still forced on us. The next book was recommended by Lee, our Marketing and Communities Director, and this is The Storyteller by Rabbi Alamadine, also known as the Hakawati. So in this book, the main character, Osama Al-Karat, returns to Beirut after many years living abroad in America to find his father on his deathbed. And his father was a Hakawati, which means a storyteller. And so as the whole family begin to gather around, all of these stories start to emerge. So it's this sort of Canterbury Tales, A Thousand and One Nights-esque book with this mix of classic Middle Eastern stories and the unique bewitching stories that Osama's father used to tell. And this book was very popular in Spain, but never quite caught on in the UK, so I think it's time we change that. So a book that I discovered as a teenager and was completely obsessed with, but nobody else I know seems to have read it, is Don't Ask Me Why by Tanya Kindersley. 
So this is about two Oxford students in the 80s, Ashley and Virg, and the first half of the book follows their time at Oxford, and they're part of this rather pretentious Bloomsbury Group-esque group of friends. So it's just about them swanning around Oxford, being pretentious in the best way to read about. But then halfway through the book, they graduate from Oxford, and then the rest of it follows them as the reality of life hits. And this is where the book really comes into its own. It so perfectly nails that feeling of the loss of youth and the disillusionment with the real world, which comes with its fair share of tragedies. And my best friend and I at school used to actually call each other Ash and Verge, named after the characters in this book. That's how obsessed we were with it. So this next one is a bit of a cheat. I'm doing three books in one. This is the Atori series by Leanne Hearn, and these were recommended by Elle, the other half of the Book Break team. So this this is a fantasy series suitable for YA readers and adult readers alike, and it's set in this medieval feudal system in a fictionalised version of Japan. It started off as this trilogy, but there are actually now five books in the series, and they all follow a young warrior named Takeo on a quest to avenge his adoptive father and pursue the love of his life, but all the while caught up in a much larger scale power struggle between all the rival clan lords. So it is massive scale fantasy, a lot of fun. And finally, some lesser known classics. So these three were suggested by Harriet Sanders, who is the publisher of the Macmillan Collector's Library books. And I always love these gorgeous books, as do you guys, they're so beautiful. But they don't just publish the really big hitters, they also have some gorgeous hidden gems that you might not have heard of. So for example, I've got here Malice of Forethought by Frances Isles, which is one of the best and earliest examples of the inverted detective story, like Columbo style, where right from the beginning, you know the murderer, you know why they did it, the question is, will they get away with it? My Antonia by Willa Cather is quite a well-known classic in the US, but much less well-known over here and it follows a group of rural pioneers in the early 19th century, in particular two children from these families, Jim and Antonia, and the way that their early experiences follow them throughout their lives. And finally, The Awakening by Kate Chopin, which is about a woman having an affair, and so it was completely scandalous when it was first published in 1899. And the main woman is on holiday with her husband and children when she first meets the man that she goes on to have an affair with. So it's considered now one of the earliest examples of feminist fiction, and it questions ideas of motherhood and femininity. So was I right? Had you heard of any of those books? Do give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and leave a comment below letting me know your favourite hidden gems that we should all check out. And of course, do subscribe to Book Break, we post new videos every Thursday, and coming up next week we have a special guest who's going to tell us all about her favourite Scottish books. And in the meantime, you can always go and follow us over on Instagram, at Book Break UK. See you next time!